Wrestling fans, it's time to rock. WWE legend Marty Jannetty of the Rockers returns for three big nights, Wednesday, September the 1st through Friday, September the 3rd. Marty will be taping historical wrestling insider episodes, live specials, insider autograph signing, support wrestling superstars, pre-order autograph date by 10s now over at bostonwrestling.com. This September, get your sunglasses ready. It's time to party with Marty. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. We're not here for Wrestling Insiders tonight, fans. This is MWF Extra as the countdown is on to our 20th anniversary and our back to the 80s WrestleFest live event reunion Saturday night, November the 13th from Memorial Hall in Melrose, Massachusetts. Johnny, you can tell the world is getting a little bit uh, more back to normal. We had our first in-person board of directors meetings without all those lousy-looking Zoom faces oh. uh, last week. There were some things I was very happy about, some things I'm not so happy about. Uh, we had President Reese and Oscar, the president and vice president, guiding the light. The board, of course, was there. Myself and you uh, is invited guests. Linda was there keeping an eye on things. But uh, overall, your impression of uh, President Reese's thoughts headed into the second half of what is going to be a blockbuster 2021. Well, I'll tell you, having sat there and listened and been part of it, I think there are some valid points, some good points, and I think some questionable points. So all in all, I thought it was a good meeting, but I do think there's still room for discussion. Well, let's talk about a couple of the bullet points uh, as I kept the, the memo. Hopefully they didn't mind me taking it and bringing it on the air. But uh, Reese's mantra, it's time to get back to business. Uh, he wants live events before November the 13th, before we go back to the 80s. And I thought, to me, that was kind of a tremendous welcome home type party for the fans, for the wrestlers, for the support staff, for everybody involved in what we do behind the scenes that make these live events come to reality. Because if we don't have all of those behind the scenes faces that don't get in the ring and wrestle, we don't have events to have wrestling in. So oftentimes they're forgotten, but we appreciate everyone involved from those that set up the chairs to those that compete in the main events. But nonetheless, your thoughts, Johnny, do you think uh, like me, we, we should hold off until November 13th? Or do you think there is room to kick things off earlier than that? Maybe even as soon as our anniversary weekend in September? Well, you know me. I'm kind of the guy that's go big or go home. Yeah. So my thought is, if it were I, I'd be looking for a venue, I'd be looking for some superstars, and I'd be willing to hit the payment running now. You want it now? I think we should start now. I see no reason to hold back. The, the professional wrestling world is beginning to open up. Several indie companies have opened up, very successful, sellout crowds. I think that MWF, Boston Wrestling, needs to follow suit. We produce and, and present the best that professional wrestling has to offer. Let's get out there and show them what it's all about. I'm all for it. Well, and news that also must put a smile on your face. I know that uh, President Reese has requested a, a, an in-person presentation about the, the plans that you have for the fabulous uh, women of wrestling. I know that one of your associates, Ron Beeson, is going to be there that you unloaded <laughs> on the telephone with not too long ago. But uh, you, there were some moments you weren't so happy with this meeting, but we're going to get there. But, uh, so it appears that I don't know if the light is exactly green, but it's, it's getting greener as far as this FWW becoming a reality. President Reese and Oscar were very receptive once hearing your ideas in person. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm working on trying to get some professional wrestlers, females. Um, I'm putting my feelers out to those uh, independent agencies that I've worked for before, as well as going around the world to see if we can't find the best for the fabulous world of women's wrestling, because nothing short of fabulous is what I do. Hopefully, we'll get the green light. If not, there's always next year. The one thing that bothered me, Johnny, is that it almost seems like all of these live event endeavors are going to come at the expense of the talk show series. Now, I know outside of the guests that have come in to speak, 
Uh, very few of us have put in any work on those talk show series other than me. But to say that it has grown the fan base outside of the greater Boston area is a huge understatement. Some months, 10 times the growth in the online and social media visits and views from the previous month. So you know, I don't want to be Barry Horowitz and pat myself on the back too hard, but that hard work since the onset of the virus has really grown the number of eyeballs we have involved with the product. And I don't think it's necessarily a good idea if we behead the talk show series uh, for the live wrestling. I think it needs to be uh, a balance. I don't see how the talk show series can get impacted by the live professional wrestling. Well, there's only so much you can stretch a, a penny into a, a copper wire, Johnny. I'm well, only one there's, person. there's you and I. All right. And but what you're trying to do is, you're trying, and, and I said this before, I'll say it again. Sometimes you just have to delegate. So what Reese is saying, and I guess I'm going to say to you is, as hard as you work and all the effort you put in, hooray, hurrah, pat on the back, Horowitz. But you know what? Micromanagement never works. So I think it's time that we begin to ask others to come in, others to help, we delegate, we know there's people we can trust, and we do what you and Melanoma have always dreamed about, and that's grow Boston Wrestling uh, and Millennium Wrestling Federation. Get bigger, get better, and there's only one way we can do this, and that's by having a proper staff that we can trust to do the bookings, to help book the venues, to get some of the talent that we need this is what it's going to take. And then we can still continue with the wonderful on-camera stuff that we do. Well, I can only hope. I certainly wouldn't want to let our great fans down, literally globally at this point. We have a heck of a lot of fun on the premieres of the talk shows and the little chat box. Um, so it's going to be an interesting few months ahead. I know Reese said the next six months could be perhaps the biggest six months in the history of this organization. There's a lot of things we cannot talk about on the air due to uh, contractual reasons, but the fans are really in for some special things. One thing I didn't find so special that I'm sure, I don't even know what you think at this point, because you created it, and then it was almost like after the, 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 the uh, storm version of 9-11 hit this area, you got in the Fabo helicopter and came back to Boston, David Reese has greenlit the return of live events to the Carolinas, and I'm not for one necessarily thrilled by that. I think they're great people, I think they're a passionate fan base, but again, Boston, you are my home. Well, you know, I just have to say this. I was accused of a lot of things. An inside job. Inside job. I got that from you, from Reese. I got Paul it from the Barra. board of directors, Paul Barra. He confronted me in the ring. Um, you know, all I'm going to say is this. One, there was never an inside job. Well, that's debatable. Whatever is that's good. That's debatable. Well, you know what? I'm going to quote from... From, from my mentor, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, whatever is good for business is good for business. So what I did was good for business. Now, would I like to go back to the Carolinas? Y'all know I want to go back to Carolinas. I enjoyed myself immensely there. I think that we should be back there. I hope that Dylan Cage is ready for our return because I can't wait to face that. I don't know what's happened to him. He's just, so he wants to behead you like what happened to his people yeah, when he, the pilgrims came over from England. He well, wants to behead you. He's lost it. He's lost it. Have you seen some of the videos? Well, yes. And I, another thing that I'm not happy with David Reese about, and his, I guess he maybe read the, the title to Eric Bischoff's autobiography about controversy, but he's greenlit the return for Dylan Cage to compete in North Carolina and Massachusetts. Anywhere there is a, an MWF Boston wrestling event, I don't want that scumbag around. But even before we started to post these bizarre, creepy, satanic videos, uh, he's, he, his target is not I anymore, it is you. You know what, Dylan? All I can say is this, buddy. You and I go back a long way. I know you just like you know me. So you know, Dylan, you want some, come get some. You know, I almost want to see this as much as I detest that scumbag, but... I'll even pay for the booking. You'll even pay? Wow. Wow. Johnny Cash over there. No pun intended, even though we're all green with the, the lighting behind us. You want some, Cage? I'm not going anywhere. I'll fly down. 
I'll get your ass up here. You want me that bad? I don't know what I did to get you that bad, but you know what, brother? You're one tough SOB. I'll never take it away from you. All the marbles don't fill the bag. But when you did that Indian stuff down there in North Carolina, you were a hit. Maybe you hit the totem pole head on. I don't know. But son, you've changed. Like I said before, to quote somebody else, you want some? Come get some. I ain't going nowhere. Well, I certainly am not looking forward to the return of Pocahontas. I was hoping he'd stay down in the teepee down in North Carolina or on the reservation, but David Reese again likes controversy. He thinks it brings more eyeballs to the plate than straight athletic competition inside the squared circle. That remains to be seen. You want to talk about controversy? I know this one had you hot under the collar that David Reese has become uh, so fond of your friend. I, I don't even think at this point we could even use that term. I'll, I'll just say, call it flat out enemy. Cam Zagami of the Uprising faction, who during your suspension used all that reality show money that he had in his pocket. Ooh. He bought the name rights to the Uprising faction. He took over contracts to the mm. talent. He took over the IPs that belonged mm. to the Uprising faction. Your baby that you grew here in this company back in 2005, and now he owns the IP and the copyrights to everything and the contractual talents. And David Reese is welcoming his input more and more. Like, I respect the, the, uh, the, the, the to be a little PC, uh, the nods that it takes to go out and do what he did, to be that cutthroat, um, and the high quality talent that he's bought. I mean, look alone from the last live event that we had in person, two of the talents in the Uprising faction have gone on to receive uh, contracts from WWE and AEW. That's very impressive. He's Who might that be? Uh, Brian Pillman Jr. and mm -hmm. AEW and Christian Casanova now with WWE. I work with both of those people. And he has his uh, uh, associate, a mentor, and who knows what else may be going on, with Vicky Guerrero. So, I mean, that's a loaded faction. And not to forget, or nor himself, Brian Malonis, who's been with Ring of Honor. He was with Ring of Honor at that time, but he's also with a nationally branded company. That's with a very powerful organization, Johnny, the Uprising. And... I don't know, what are your interactions going to be with said talents that used to be paid for out of your coffers? Well, well, well. First of all, David Reese, you and I had a little chat at the board of directors meeting. You know, David, you're pretty good at helping people with psychological problems. You probably ought to have sat down with Cam Zagami because that kid is a card no seven cards short of a full deck you know reese i have respect for you and apparently you have respect for me but you know what david boy you ran your mouth <laughs> especially <laughs> with cam zagami <laughs> so you know what zagami choose who you want i'll be in my corner with who i want and i'll tell you what and you apologize How's that, Reese? You want an apology for all the things that you've done. You want an apology from David Reese from trying to build the the biggest baddest. build. Build? Are you kidding me? I already had that stuff in line. Zagami comes along. He picks up my money. He picks up my talent. And you're telling me not to ask for an apology? You know I what? I'll tell you what. Let's just do one better. Let's leave Reese the hell out of it. Because if he ever got near the ring, he'd probably be broken in half. No respect. Dr. Reese, I have the utmost respect for you, but you don't understand the business. You don't understand what happens when somebody dumps on your territory, when somebody puts you outside. Sagami, you got that long, long hair. You got that cute little smile. Co-star, you weren't a co-star. Co-star of America. You didn't even come close. You lost. Sagami, you're a loser. And I'm telling you right now, you look me right in my eye. Come November 13th, I promise you, and I promise every fan there, Sagami, you're going to lose again. And the price you're going to pay, you don't have deep enough pockets. So you know what? Let's move on, because I'll tell you what, the more you talk about it, the more excited I get about the 13th, because I can't wait. I can't wait to present my wrestler. 
against whoever Zagami's got. Buddy boy. Wow. Twinkle toes. You want some? Come get some, Cam. You double-crossed me. I don't take well to double-cross. And you know the second thing I hate? Liars. You snookered Guerrero. You took Malonis, who's a kingpin in my book, one of the best. You took Christian Casanova, who I've worked with at several shows, an outstanding talent. And Pillman the same way. You snuck him through the door. Well, now you know what? There's no more running. Because I'll tell you what, November 13th, regardless of what everybody says, will I be there? Will I won't be there? It sounds like I will. Maybe I won't. You know what, Tsugami? What did I say before? Keep one eye on the door, one eye on your back. That's all I'm going to say. Well, Johnny, I guess maybe the, the one more point of contention that we can actually share with the fans is that David Reese, uh, unlike other companies that maybe could do the same with their video archives that we will not mention on this show, trying to look at uh, the, the days of greater success, uh, where we're coming back from unprecedented times, Reese looked through the video files, he looked at some of the numbers, and he found that the 2008 through 2011 period to be the quote-unquote glory years of the MWF in Boston wrestling. And at that time, uh, you had a, a separation of sorts from the un, uh, uprising faction, I should say. Uh, JBL came into town as WWE Intercontinental Champion with the guns ablazing. He took over the faction. And at that time, you and I were almost in a kumbaya state. And David Reese is strongly uh, suggested and almost challenged that you and I try and work together when it comes to the talent pool coming in and out of the organization. Now, do you see this working, considering our tainted past since 2005? We, we have successfully presented talk shows, but it's very different than presenting live wrestlers on live wrestling events, considering some of the way you go about things and the way I go about things. All I can say is this, and I, I'll say it again. Dr. David Reese, I have nothing but respect for. I really do. I really do. Um, but I will say this, I think he's hit the nail on the head. You and I have had a bumpy past, to say the least. You poured Kool-Aid down my throat. Well, you I kinda, had nothing to you, do with that. You kind of laughed your little butt off when that happened, well, when JBL <laughs> shoved the million dollar bill down my throat and said, you should have drunk the Kool-Aid. And that was another great wrestling, two great wrestling greats out there beating my ass down, Tommaso Ciampa and Slick Wagner Brown. But you know what? David Reese, I have to respect what you've said, because I think myself and the gentleman across from me will certainly be able to coexist and certainly be able to do things as far as the talent goes. We may have a difference of opinion, but as I always say, we can always agree to disagree and still be friends, regardless of the past. And I'll tell you what, my buddy over there and I, we've had some pretty hot past battles to the point where I would have taken Dylan Cage, hide him myself, found out where he lived, and we'd have taken care of him. Well, there Dylan wouldn't be anybody. To my house, so. Well, there you go. Yeah. See? So, there you I think, uh, David Reese, you're right, Dr. David Reese, you're right on target. I think Marathi and Cena, M and C, we can do what you need done. Get the talent, we'll do the job. All right, wrestling fans, we wanted to update you on what happened as things are heating up this summer, headed into our 20th anniversary of Summer Turns to Fall. For John Cena Sr., I'm Dan Marotti. We thank you for joining us on this MWF Extra Special. We'll be back soon with more news and notes. You and yours, be well. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, Friday, July the 31st, 1987. In the opening contest, Jerry Allen beat Jose Estrada. Outback Jack with the win over Frenchie Martin. Coco Beware defeated Nikolai Volkov. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff battled Don Morocco to a double disqualification. Demolition victorious over the British Bulldogs. Ken Patera and superstar Billy Graham beat Hercules and King Kong Bundy. And in the main event, Killer Khan defeated WWF world champion Hulk Hogan via countout. 
If you are in Landover Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Inside Us Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view, watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times 